Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome everyone. I hope you're well. I'm your host, Ben Lively, and you're listening to Shake and Awake episode number 46. I just wanted to thank you for tuning in to uh, the show uh, today, wherever you are and whatever you're doing right this very moment. It means everything to me to, uh, to share the messages that God's laid on my heart to share. And as always, I promise you another great show. Uh, But more than anything, my hope for you today and always is that you have an actual encounter with the Lord, not just another podcast episode. And if you find any value uh, in these episodes, would you take one to two minutes just to uh, uh, pass the word to at least one person you know to help spread the show to uh, others that you feel could benefit takes a couple minutes yes uh, but it allows the word of mouth to spread for others to know that there's thumbs up uh, from you that this show out of the millions out there is something worth taking a listen to perhaps their relationship with christ will strengthen uh, as a result and uh, god works in so many ways and, and this is just but one of them so without further delay let's get ready to invite god in with us right here right now and allow him to speak directly to our hearts and minds. So today's topic is God will not forgive you if you do not forgive everyone. I don't know about you, but just hearing that out loud gets my attention. It's like we know God forgives unconditionally to those who are repentant, but we often don't think of the fact that it's a two-way street. At least I don't, or I didn't. You know, we can often forget, and many actually do not know that there are more than double the amount of do's and don'ts in the New Testament than there are in the Old te- uh, Old Testament. There's over 1,100 to be exact. Yes, I'm dead serious. And we see God as an all-forgiving God without the responsibilities sometimes of doing His will, which is multifaceted or, or multi-pronged. One of them is to forgive others. I know, I know, that's, that's easy, right? <laughs> I, I just say I forgive them and it's all good. The question really is, when God looks directly into your heart, which the Bible says he does, in fact, that's all he looks at, and the motives and desires of your heart, does he see pure forgiveness? To take it just a stretch further, is there anyone in your life that you truly haven't 100% forgiven? I'm not talking about forgetting them or uh, perhaps forgetting what they did, but purely forgiving them erasing their debt from your life now that's a more difficult and thought-provoking question to answer is it not i'd expect it to be it's one most never think about or or answer and unfortunately do and and that is forgive everyone as your father in heaven has forgiven you you know i saw a really good uh relatable quote from Uh, Mark Twain the other week that caught my attention. You may have heard it. It goes, worrying is like paying a debt you don't owe. Another is just like it and perhaps equally or more damning. This one is for Marianne uh, Williamson and it goes, unforgiveness is like drinking poison yourself and waiting for the other person to die. And the reason I I use both quotes is that they both are uh, self-fulfilling prophecies that we do to ourselves by not forgiving. So we inflict the additional damage on ourselves, not realizing that this compounds the issues stemming from the original acts that caused the unforgiveness to begin with. It's a a double death. Here's the third death and and the worst death that we get from unforgiveness that most don't know or don't realize is that God does not and will not forgive our sins unless we forgive others. Yes, it's true. And here's the scripture to back it up. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. 14 states, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But he he doesn't stop there. Verse 15, Matthew 6, verse 15 states, But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. 
So when we repent and forgive, and or sorry, when we repent and confess our sins as a believer, the Lord will grant us relief from his discipline. But Jesus said in Matthew 6 that if a believer is so hard, hard, uh, hard-hearted that he or she withholds forgiveness in earthly relationships, then the Lord will forgive his forgiveness for that person's sins as well, which means the Lord will visit earthly discipline, uh, discipline against such a, a hard-hearted believer. Did you know this? I never knew until I began reading my Bible, and once I got to this verse, I must have read this about 10 times in a row until I started scrolling through my Rolodex of people. <laughs> Some of you don't even know what, it is, what a Rolodex is. It's a, a directory or a list, right? So uh, Until I started scrolling through the people that perhaps I didn't fully forgive. And it made me take a deeper dive into my heart and mind and, and determine why I was no longer angry at most or I had forgotten about them. I had never truly forgiven them fully, 100%. I mean true forgiveness. And yes, a couple of them, my blood pressure still raised at simply the mentioning or, or hearing of their names. So forgiveness was definitely not there. You know what? Forgiveness was nowhere to be found then for me either. You know, let that sink in. For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. And it stops there. There's a period there. Because there's no ifs, ands, or buts. We give them, but the Father in heaven does not. And I cannot forget that to this day. Each time I get annoyed or I feel anger, resentment, or, you know, tension arrives, I think of this verse, you know, how then can I not forgive them? doesn't mean I have to agree or uh, to approve of the situation that occurred. It means I forgive them because it's not them we're fighting against anyway. Did you know that? Do you know this? Don't believe me or is it hard to imagine? It, it says so in Ephesians 6.12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, that's the other person, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It's the constant temptation and destruction by the darkened spiritual realm that we're coming up against. You know, this reminds me of one of the most powerful quotes I ever heard regarding the sins of others against us. It, it, it put everything into perspective for me, and I imagine that it will be with me uh, for the rest of my life. And I thank God uh, for leading me to it. It helps me forgive. It helps me truly forgive. It helps convict me of my own sins and the need uh, for others to forgive me for my wrongs as well. It's by an unknown source. So I contribute this one to God. It states, don't judge others just because they sin differently than you. Now, in full disclosure, this verse was targeted towards judgment and the judging of others. But the way in which I was convicted was to look at what caused the unforgiveness and why they may have done what they what they have done. So if you take Ephesians 6, 12, which helps us to understand it's not even them that we're fighting, then you take the quote I just read and what do you have? It's the ultimate qu equation of forgiveness. It's the way God intended us to love it and to look at and love others. For who are we not to forgive them of their sins, yet expect God to forgive us of ours? For the Bible says all sins are counted equal. James 2.10, for instance, states, for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Sin is sin is sin is sin in God's eyes. So let's see what else the Bible tells us about unforgiveness. And then I'll close with the blessings that we receive as a result of forgiving others. That may surprise you as if God forgiving us as a contingency upon forgiving others uh, is not or, or was not good enough for you. So Romans 12, 17 to, 20, uh, 17 to 21 states, repay no one evil for evil. But give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. 
If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Yes, it's harder than it sounds, but this is what we're commanded to do. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So then who are we not to forgive others? Okay. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4, 26 to 27, be angry or don't be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Because that's what we're doing by doing so. 2 Timothy 2, 23 to 26 have nothing to do with foolishness or sorry, with foolish, ignorant controversies. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels and the Lord's servants must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone able to teach patiently enduring evil correcting his opponents with gentleness god may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil uh, devil after being captured by him to do his will romans 12 19 beloved never avenge yourselves but leave it to the wrath of god for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord you're not the judge and the jury he is luke 6 37 judge not and you will not be judged condemn not and you will not be condemned forgive and you will be forgiven got three more and whenever uh, sir, uh mark eleven twenty five, and whenever you stand praying Forgive if you have anything against anyone. Again, no ifs, ands, or buts. If you have anything against anyone, forgive. So that your Father, also is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Luke 7, 47. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But he is, for he who is forgiven little, loves little. So again, now he's tying forgiveness to love. Most important commandment. Last verse is Matthew 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And so I'll conclude this portion uh, of, of today's segment with a parable. Some of you may know uh, and some of you may not know and or, or knew and simply forgotten. But this is so vital to uh, to take with you and uh, remain steadfast and not veer off the short and the narrow path. So this is Matthew eighteen to twenty eighteen verses twenty one to thirty five, and this puts it all into perspective. At least for me, it's it's known as the parable of the unforgiving servant, which many of us can uh, raise our hands to. So uh, here we go. Then Peter came up to him and said to him, Lord, how often? Will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus responded. He said to him, I do not say to you seven times. He's basically saying, no, you say seven times. That's not what I'm saying. I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle these accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not repay, his master ordered him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I'll pay you everything. Out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, a lot smaller amount. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. 
He refused, and he went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. And when his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. And they went out and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from the heart. I'm going to read that last part. This isn't a could be. This is reality. This is to be taken literally. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you. That's me and every one of you that's listening will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from the heart. Now, I'm going to be selfish for a moment to conclude today's show. You know, beside the fact God forgives those that forgive others, there are many earthly benefits and rewards that we receive on earth that are payment and forgiveness as well. Who listening today is is proud of their entire past? Who listening today has no regrets? Who listening today has a chain of or even more possibly a handful of chains that are attached to you that lead to a person in your life that you have not forgiven, that you have st- that you still have bitterness or anger or pain or hurt or sadness or hate or unanswered questions or haunting memories from. Let me ask you that in a different way. Is there anyone that is one or more that had they not hurt you in some way either once or many times, you would be more at peace today. I'm here to let you know it's not too late to have that peace. It's not too late to erase the the pains of the past that haunt you today. It's not too late to erase the wrongs and be lifted up and unchained from what some would raise their hands to as literally decades of pain, gone in one second. Yes, I'm talking about In one second, all your hurt gone. You see, as Jesus stated with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. That's Matthew 19, 26. We will never be able to do this alone, but thank God literally that we have him who has the power to eliminate one moment what has been burdening us for some time and for many of us for a lifetime. So when you try to do life alone, when you try to not include God in everything, you reap the pain that comes with it. You know, you're you're only as strong as you are, but with God, you can become as strong as he allows. One person robbed me of my childhood. One person beat me for no reason, constantly for many years. One person who was supposed to be a protector and a father figure was the worst demon I've ever met. And treated me worse than anyone in my life. In fact, all combined has ever treated me. That one person who had I not fled, I would have killed. It's the same one I would now sit with and have a meal with today. And befriend. And have open and honest and wholesome communication with. In fact, I I really wish I could. It took me 34 years to figure out that I could never do what God did for me in one moment in time. He lifted decades of hate, pain, anguish, retaliation, fear, unforgiveness, resentment, and regret. And he took it upon himself and he took off all the chains and he threw them away. It was if it had never happened. Do I remember? I mean, if I, if I really sit down and think about it, sure. But my blood pressure does not elevate even one degree. I have no ill feelings. I have no pain or hurt or anger. I just want to tell that one person I forgive them because I allow God to intervene and provide what I now know to be true forgiveness. It's beyond the words of, I forgive you. You see, once you truly forgive another person, the enemy has lost. You get to forgive. God then also forgives you. And you have no chains that are shackling you to whatever the enemy hopes to have you chained for, for life. You get your life back. The one God has designed for you and you get what most people attempt and buy their way to and they never get. And that's a life that is free from the enemy's grips on your heart and mind. 
He and God are always at constant battle for your soul. Forgiveness helps God to continue to win that battle, and it helps you to remain in the fight and free to keep your mind and your heart and body and soul moving forward towards the light and focused on the prize, the prize truly worth fighting for. So in closing, my final statement is this, and I have no better statement than what's already written in the Bible. And so here's your also your homework. As it is written in Matthew 5, 21 to uh, 26, you have heard that it was said to the ancients, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who said to, uh, says to his brother, Raka, this, you know, this is the only passage in the Bible where the term Raka is used. Raka, uh, by the way, comes from the Aramaic term Requa. Uh, it was a derogatory uh, expression meaning empty-handed, um, or sorry, empty-headed, insinuating a person's stupidity or inferiority. It was an, it was an offensive name used just just to show utter uh, contempt for another person. And Jesus warned that the use of such a word to describe someone was tantamount to murder and deserving of the severest punishment of the law. So I'll continue. Uh, he'll, he'll be uh, subject to the Sanhedrin, which was the traditional court of the elders. But anyone who says you fool will be subject to the fire of hell. So if you're offering your gift at the altar, and there, rem remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Reconcile quickly with your adversary while you're still on the way to court. Otherwise, he may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown in prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. So my final question to you is this. How many more hours or days or years do you want to remain in bondage over a person who God can help free you from in the blink of an eye? The answer to that belongs to you and rests solely on your shoulders, or in this case, your heart and your faith in God. Don't wait another day. So before we end today's show, I just want to thank you all again for tuning in. I hope you were touched by today's message in scripture. And again, I'd like to ask you a favor only if you've received any value out of today's show. Would you tell at least one person, you know, just call them, text them, ping them, email them, talk to them, just tell them to give a show a listen. And you can check out the show at shaken-awake.com. You can email me directly at ben at shaken dash awake.com or call or text me directly for any reason at 407-493-3208. And if you have any ideas for the show, let me know. And if you have someone that you know that has an incredible uh, testimony of coming to the Lord and you think they'd be great at uh, being a guest on the show, please connect with me. I'd love to hear more. Uh, next week, tune in next Sunday or whenever you're able as we dive into another important topic of today, which is, does the world recognize you as a Christian or one of them? Next week's episode is another powerful and do not miss episode. Thank you all for joining. And until next week, take great care of yourself and each other and God bless you all.